as your character completes quests and kills those monsters and gains that ultimate treasure, there comes a time that you want them to improve their skills. But how does character advancement work in a levelless system such as Mithras? Well, in this video, I am going to explain to you the advancement system in the rule set of Mithras. My name's Inwills, and welcome to the In Crowd. So after you have finished slaying monsters, recovering that lost magical item or relic, or even es escorting that local caravan across the wilderness, it is always nice to see how your character has improved or advanced so that you can impress the party with your new skills in the next session. I've already mentioned that Mithras um, has no levels. So how does the system allow for character advancement? Well, it uses a system which is all based on experience roles. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you the basis of experience role, where they come from, how they're awarded, and also how um, characters or players can use them to increase existing skills. In later videos, I'll talk about characteristics, increasing characteristic, increasing passions, and learning new skills and new spells. As always, if you have enjoyed this video, then please consider liking, commenting or subscribing. Each one of these supports not only this channel, but also contributes to me achieving my dream. OK, let's get down to those experience roles. So experience roles are rewarded to players after a period of time adventuring or carrying out quests. When and how many experience roles are given is left up to the game master. Although it's recommended that you do it at suitable junctures in the campaign, we tend to give out experience points um, at the end of a series of adventures, or more importantly, once the characters have returned back to a base in order to complete training. It's suggested that all characters receive the same amount of experience roles. It doesn't matter what they contributed or anything like that. It's assumed that they're working as a party. However, the total number of um, skill roles available to the um, player and character is dependent on the charisma role of the character. So if the charisma role is between seven and 12, then there is no adjustment. But with a charisma score of six or less, the character gets a negative one adjustment to the experience roles. So for example, if I gave out three um, experience roles as a GM, the character with less six or less um, charisma would get only two experience roles. Of course, characters with high charisma, i.e. 13 plus, and for each six points after 18, they gain an extra one experience role on top of whatever the party has got. So if you have a charisma of 15 and the GM gave you three experience roles, because of your high charisma, you would actually get four. As a GM, I really like this because charisma um, has an impact on the game and is no longer that throwaway um, stat or characteristic. Interestingly, relating to our campaign, um, nobody has a positive um, modifier to their um, experience roles, although Hengis, the warrior tank, does have a low charisma score. So his character, his player always gets one less experience role than everybody else. So what can players use these experience roles for? Well, essentially, there's five different areas that they can actually use these re roles for. And these are increasing existing skills, increasing characteristics, i.e. 
strength, dexterity, constitution, etc. Increasing passions, learning new skills and learning new spells. Now, in this video, I'm just going to concentrate on the first one, um, existing skills. But please come back and see the other videos as I produce and publish them. So increasing skills um, is by far the most common use of experience roles. Uh, within my campaign, I encourage the players to describe how they are improving rather than just rolling the dice. This might be studying in a library over book or praying or working outside on a practice dummy. There's no set procedure for this, but I really like sort of like getting the character, the players to explain how these uh, advanced are going about. So for a character to use experience roll to improve a skill, they need to roll one percentile dice to generate a random number between one and 100. They then add their intelligence score onto that dice roll. And if they get the same or higher than their current skill, then their skill will improve. Now, this normally improves by 1d4 plus 1 percentile points, although there is the option that if GM wants to advance the characters quicker, they could do 1d6 plus 1. However, we have found out that the former 1d4 plus 1 um, actually works absolutely fine. Now, if the character or player does not roll higher than their um, current skill, then the they still get an advancement, but it only increases by 1%. Now, again, you can see that the intelligence score is really important here because it's adding onto the skill roll. And as your skill gets higher and higher and higher, the probability of you getting those improvements actually gets less. Also remember that if a character has fumbled the skill throughout the um, adventures, they get to put a little tick in their character box or they mark that they fumbled that skill in some way. And then the character automatically gets a 1% increase. Yeah, even if you fumble, you know, it's worth it. So let's have a quick look at the players using their experience rolls and see how they actually roll the dice in order to progress. Here we go. So yeah, over to you, Hengist. Um, so Hengist is going to use one of his experience rolls on his, well, both of them on endurance, but I'll do one at a time. So that'll be your, what's your normal endurance skill? At the moment, it is 62. And your intelligence being? Uh, intelligence is 11. 11. Uh, cool. So you roll um, a 1d100, add your intelligence onto it, and we try to get higher than 62. Pachow. 60, yes. uh, 63, Ooh. so that, that's a 1d4 plus 1. Uh, 1d... Oh, no, hang on. Let's do it this way. 1d4 plus un. 3. Uh, so that's 3. So now a 1d100 plus 11, and we're now going for 60. Um, I don't. No, I don't no, need. I don't need customs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> your your uh, dice is made out of very poor quality plastic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. Right. So let's do the It's one now again. sixty-six or above. You need. Yeah. No. No. So that'll go up to sixty-seven. Okay. So mm -hmm. so that's done and dusted. So and that's it. So next time I'll have a quick look at increasing. Um, passions but then we'll look at characteristics and new spells and new skills in a later video can i please remind you that if you are uh, an avid mithras rule set player that there is now a mithras podcast it can be found in the link below it's called mithras matters and in the first episode we have an interview with one of the co-designers of mithras lawrence whitaker so it's definitely worth Worth checking it out. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and please make sure that you like, comment or subscribe and hit that bell button so that you get a notification when the next video comes live. Until then, I hope that all your experience roles get a high success and you always get a 1d4 plus 1 percentile improvement. See you all later. Bye. 
the party got rather beaten up in the last adventure. Um, Bartleby nearly lost an arm. Um, Briar herself was dropped coming down the stairs and had internal injuries. Hengis got beaten up as well. Gulliver got left against a screaming demon horde. Oh, sorry, frog um, tra break trachean horde. And they sort of like limped back to Linda at the end of Last Adventure. Um, luckily for the party, and um, Bartleby is a member of uh, an order of thesis, uh, clerics for want of a better word, and healing was administered administered by the priests so no arms have been removed or lost the part